Well, here it is August 21st. So I want to take you into the hoop house since our growing season up here in northern Minnesota is kind of winding down. We could have a frost any day now and uh, generally by the first week in September we do. So pretty much our growing season will move into the hoop houses and I want to show you what we have going on in here. So we're, we're using a method that we call hybrid ponics. Now there's something called hybrid hydroponics, which is kind of a combination of hydroponics and organic growing, but I have trouble saying it, hybrid hydroponics. So I'm calling it hybrid ponics. Whether it makes sense or not, ponics I guess means to work or to toil. So hydro meaning water, it's like what, letting water do the work to grow your plants for you. Well, this is a hybrid of that. So what we've done is we've taken all of our self-watering planters that started to use up the nutrients that were in the potting mix that we had planted them in. Most of these are in just three gallon pots. So there, there's not a lot of nutrients in there. We started out with a good quality potting mix with some of our own compost, which gets the plants off to a vigorous start but then they start using it up, the roots start taking up all of those nutrients, so the plants by mid-season start to look a little bit tough. So we help them along, we give them an IV solution of nutrients, and that's what we call hybrid ponics. So we have a tote here that I got for less than $5, and what I'm going to do is take this hose here that has rainwater. It comes out of our rain barrels out back here. So I'm going to fill this up with about, you know, I'm just guessing about eight to 10 gallons of water. So then what I'm going to do is I'm going to add the nutrient solution. Now this is one part. I call it part B. And this is nothing but calcium nitrate solution, concentrate. So I'm using a quarter cup, which would be about four tablespoons. It's about a tablespoon per gallon. I'm going to be adding, this is half full, so I'm gonna be adding about four gallons. So I'm gonna add quarter cup of calcium nitrate state state and a quarter cup of our part a kind of doing it reverse this is a lettuce fertilizer it's a 81536 and we use that for everything we don't use a separate fertilizer for tomatoes. At this point, they really don't need the nitrogen so much and they're doing just fine as you'll see here. And this also contains Epsom salts, which is magnesium sulfate. So I'm going to add then a quarter cup of part A. And then I'll finish filling it up and at this point, we this thing can use, I have to fill this about every other day. So what I'm going to do is shut the camera off and then I'll, I'll take you around and show you what we have set up here and how those things work. So this is the tote that we're filling right now that we've just added nutrient solution to. So when it gets above above this line here, pretty much I'll shut it off. And then, you've seen this connector before probably. This one we'll talk about, I'll, I'll show you how we do this, but this is our adapter so we can connect garden hose. And the reason we use garden hose instead of just the quarter inch vinyl tubing is that it's, it's much cheaper and you can go long distances with the garden hose and you don't have to use so much vinyl tubing. So what we have is 
this Y connector connected to this float box, which is connected to 13 of these planters that contain peppers and eggplant. And it's also connected to this float box that connects to six of these planters that have tomatoes. And now these are a plum tomato, a paste tomato. And like this plant here alone, I counted over 70 tomatoes forming on just that one plant. You know, so say we get an average of 50 on each plant. Well, that's 300 tomatoes from six three gallon containers. We'll head over to the other hoop house and I'll show you what's going on over there. In here, we have a smaller tote that's hooked up to this float box that I have hooked up to these melons. Now, the one thing I've learned about growing melons in a three gallon bucket <laughs> is that the roots are really extensive and very inquisitive and they'll even sneak inside the split tubing that's in these planters and make their way into the tubing. So I had some roots clogging things. So melons aren't something I'm going to be growing in three gallon buckets anymore. I'll grow them in the earth boxes, which have a larger capacity. But what we have over here is another tote that is filled with the same nutrient solution. And then I have a Y connector here with quarter inch tubing going to that float box, which feeds these six tomato plants. And then this garden hose goes to <laughs> both this uh, float box, which connects to these six tomato plants and another uh, another connector here goes to this float box which is feeding three earth boxes so it's asking a lot of one tote to feed all of these which is why I'm filling these things I just filled this one this morning every other day. But the alternative is to not have the production that we need to have before we get a killing frost. So I'll take you over and I'm going to show you some of the components, how we put this thing together. Well, first of all, these are the only plants that I have with the float box connected directly to the rain barrels without having any nutrient solution added to them. And these are the habanadas that if you've been watching other videos, you've been seeing that these things have been struggling, doing basically nothing all summer. And they finally decided to wake up and start producing some, some peppers. But I might have to give up on habanadas. They, as much as we really like them, they don't seem very, uh, well suited for our zone two and a half climate we have here. So I don't know what I'll do. I'll try to get get some peppers off them, but if not, I think we'll have to give up on them. But anyways, here's the, the components that we use to attach to our totes. Now these are the half inch PEX swivel adapters. This is a two piece deal. So this is the inner part and this part is a rubber gasket that fits inside this threaded female portion. And then what we do is we, we install a one of our 3 8 inch silicone grommets which we use just 
by yeah, drilling a 9 16 clean 9 16 inch hole right through the tote, insert that grommet, and then into the grommet, you might want to wet this first, spit on it or something, and then even though this is half inch PEX, it'll slide right into the grommet. And so you have a watertight fitting going into your tote. And then into, threaded into the female portion of this swivel adapter, you will attach the male portion of this brass adapter. Now this is a $1.69 available locally here at our, our local L&M fleet supply. So this screws into this and then the other side is your three-quarter inch hose thread. So that connects to a, a hose. So quick and easy way without spending too much, a two pack of these is about two bucks, two or three bucks. So pretty inexpensive way to connect. And then again, you can add If you need to, you can put a screen in here. We have screens available. If you think you're going to get debris in here and you don't want to clog your the orifice in your uh, in your mini float valve. So then what we add what we're going to have available on our website is a packet like this. This is part A. And this is the lettuce fertilizer and the Epsom salts, the magnesium sulfate combined together. And this will be mixed with one quart of clean non-chlorinated water. Part A. Part B is four ounces of calcium nitrate, which will be dissolved in another quart of clean non-chlorinated water in a separate container. And now I use just milk and water jugs this I had for, set up for a, for a half gallon, so I, I, we just cut it down to a quart. But a quart is plenty to make, well, let's see, a tablespoon, uh, about, let's see here. Yeah, a quart of the nutrient solution, the concentrate, will make up 64 gallons. So these two packets, part A and part B, are enough for 64 gallons of hydroponic solution to use. So that, that makes quite a bit. Now the reason they have to be separated into part A and part B is that if you combine them in the concentrated form, uh, the uh, calcium is going to precipitate out and you'll basically end up with rocks on the bottom of your containers. So we keep them separate. So that's kind of just a quick video about hybrid ponics. A new term as far as I know. One we intend to make popular. So until next time is Mark again with Backwood Basics. So let's grow hybrid hydroponically together.